Ron Paul wins the Republican nomination. Ron Paul versus Obama. Liberty wins. A vote for Ron Paul, dead or alive, checked or written in, is a vote to say fuck you to the system. The MSM has made quite a bit about Obama having stolen a large portion of the pre-Y4L era Ron Paul movement's newer converts in the later months of 2008, after Ron Paul conceded, when it looked like the only options to elect for president were either Barack Hussein Obama, Democrat, or John McCain, a warmongering racist bigot Republican for who would follow the, by then, massively unpopular W. Bush administration. Obama was clearly the lesser of two evils against McCain, and he would be again against Romney. However, both in 08, when I wrote Ron Paul in on the ballot, and now in 12, Ron Paul could, can, and God willing will beat Barack Hussein Obama hands down. He does in most statistical data sets when they're polled head-to-head, and more importantly, Ron Paul has already transformed the rhetoric of the Republican Party to a position now somewhat to the left wing of Barack Obama and the modern Zionist APAC-funded Democrat Party that supports him. Ron Paul does not just want peace in our time. He is, and has been for many terms now, demanding peace now. That is bold and daring, and it takes brass balls too big to be busted by even Sasha Baron Cohen dressed up as Bruno, which, by the way, Ron Paul happens to have. The MSM pray around Ron Paul like vultures, and it is our fucking duty as the American people to tell those pricks to go fuck themselves. They are the same stuck-up snobs you didn't like in high school, and now they run your government, own every network on TV, and broadcast their own version of the truth on their cable network news media channels. So whatever happens between now and this coming November, I would urge you, whoever you are who might read this by then, to write in Ron Paul on the ballot if you have to, alive or dead. Ron Paul is an idea we can all look up to right now and hope one day to achieve even more than for the same cause. Potential long-term outcomes. Romney, Obama, and Ron Paul all believe they are doing what is good and right and just from their own point of view. Romney and Obama share the same point of view. Both want bigger government and more war. Romney wants to expand the wars and Obama the welfare, but both want the government to go hat in hand begging for that money for their programs to the Federal Reserve privately owned U.S. Central Bank and borrow it. They collect it back from us in taxes, but they fund their programs first. That's the way it goes. Either you think welfare is a lesser evil, or you think that war is for the greater good. There are no compromises on this matter in Washington, D.C. Both parties are backed by the big banks who are owned and operated as FDIC-insured member banks of the Federal Reserve System of the USA. Both parties advocate the same thing, only using different reasons to justify doing it. Either we want to kill someone or we want to help someone, but even if the person or people we our killing and funding are the same as with the government and the people of Pakistan being loaned aid to and drone bombs simultaneously. Their tactic is to make the government at all levels bigger and bigger by making up new laws and new departments and to pay for it using the Federal Reserve's worthless pretend money. Then the Fed expects to be paid back for their loan of this counterfeit crap and so the government turns around and takes the taxes out of every citizen's paychecks. Make taxation voluntary. The only way to get money out of politics is to not pay taxes. However, it would be wiser to follow Ron Paul's Restore America Now budget plan. In the first year, he has attritioned out five federal departments, 
and by reselling the auto industry's private shares bought out by the federal government under TARP, and by allocating 100% of the first year's taxes to paying down the federal debt the U.S. government owes the Federal Reserve, he will avoid cutting any of the mainline welfare or warfare departments and manage to balance the budget to zero debt by the end of the first year and the beginning of the second. By tax season 2014, you might not even have to pay taxes. All you have to do is vote Ron Paul. Neo-feudalism under corporate monarchies polluting a collectivist dystopia. Imagine a second term with Barack Obama as U.S. President, Joe Biden as Vice President, and Ben Bernanke as Federal Reserve Board Chairman. Imagine a first term of a Mitt Romney presidency with Rand Paul as Vice President and anyone, even Ron Paul, as Federal Reserve Board Chair. Firstly, I could not imagine Ron Paul accepting that post on the grounds that, to quote myself, if Einstein runs for president of the free world, you don't appoint him head of designing new bombs instead. A vote for either Obama, with whoever is vice president, or for Mitt Romney, even if Jesus Christ himself or his running mate is Veep, is a vote for the same thing, Goldman Sachs, a Wall Street investment megabank. They have donated the majority of their campaign contributions to both Obama and Romney. Both Obama and Romney are two sides of one coin, and this coin is non-refundable. If either Obama or Romney wins, there will be a global economic downturn the likes of which no one has ever seen before on this scale. Breadlines will form in all nations as hyperinflation makes staple goods unaffordable. Revolutions will take place across the planet. In every major city, there will be uprisings against the local governments. Riots and looting will raise all we have worked so long to erect. Massive toxic pollution will occur as the infrastructure for our fossil fuel energy industries begins to rust. And eventually, plagues will spread from lack of sanitation. New human-targeting diseases will mutate. Starvation will overtake many. Some might foolishly seek shelter in the deep underground military bases, the dumbs, or attempt to implement global martial law. It will be too late to save our species, and we might take the entire planet Earth down with us. If either Romney or Obama wins, to quote Gerald Salente, we lose. Libertarian Anti-Taxation pro-gold redistribution, anti-corporatist utopia. What is wealth? Wealth, most agree, is all your property, all your resources. But you would never trade some things you own. Those are your savings, what you want to keep with you. The rest is merely fodder for the ever-circulating free market. Now, among all the rest of your assets that you would be willing to trade from, wouldn't it be great if you had just one thing that you could trade in instead of trading away all your collection of different goods? Well, when they ask you at the grocery store if you want paper or plastic, and you unthinkingly reply your preference, you should think about the question, what is money? What works best is money. What is the difference between different forms of currency? The matter of gold is too complex to debate here, but suffice it to say there are enough planchette factories now in operation to mint enough gold coins for at least the amount of circulating paper cash currency in the U.S. market by tax season 2014. All you would need to do would be to vote Ron Paul. In a libertarian form of government, the federal level would be reduced to a small system of courts, to quote libertarian Ayn Rand from the now movie and book Atlas Shrugged, and their sole function on that level would be to try financial crimes as treason. Wall Street corporatist racketeering investment bank, Federal Reserve counterfeiting, and lobbyists and campaign contributor insider trading crimes are only a few. 
Besides the laws applying to high finance in a libertarian and or socialistic communist utopia, there are no laws applying to anyone as individuals. All the economic shackles of sociopolitics would shatter, and the MSM blinders be torn away. Of course, we should all know by now that this utopian vision can be brought about by only one of the two possible ways imagined for doing so. The socialistic communist strategies of revolution and multinationalism will result in a dialectical compromise methodology, a conceptual infinitely repeating halves scenario, whereby their goal of a utopia will never be reached, but will always retreat from their grasp like the horizon on a globe. Only by liberty, by liberation, and by liberating of the free market from the shackles of government regulations written by the rich elite for their own benefit, only then will we be able to achieve the straight and narrow or middle path, the so-called royal road, to an anarchist utopia. Most likely outcomes given historical dialectics. Given the New World Order appointed the present incumbent U.S. President, and thus his fate is in their hands, and given that the New World Order is socialist communist in the philosophical composition of its elder members, who encourage their younger groupies to use the tactics of revolution and multinationalism. And given these tactics form a dialectic of incremental compromises until eventually the New World Order's collectivist vision is realized. So given all these things, and knowing the New World Order is well enough powerful to have Ron Paul killed at any moment, it is possible to plot the most likely scenario from the points of view of either Ron Paul winning the presidency of the U.S., which would be good, or Obama or Romney winning, which would be worse. If Ron Paul wins, his four-year term in office will be just as laid out in his Restore America Now budget plan released in late 2011, early 2012. I recommend reading that document if you've had the time to read all this too, because it will explain the American way out of this mess we're in. On the other hand, there's the New World Order, or globalist way to do things. They will attempt to keep localizing each new bankruptcy as they occur, country by country as they have in Europe. They will keep localizing each new revolution as they occur, as they have country by country in the Middle East. They will keep sending SWAT police teams in to break apart Occupy events in city after city and localize the coverage in the U.S. MSM. The real people are tired of the bullshit and getting more royally pissed off with each passing second. The planet is, for all intents and purposes, a ticking time bomb right now. It can go either way insofar as Obama and Romney are like a Lenin, and Ron Paul more like Trotsky, as the socialist communists would have you know about. Or you can ignore the MSM and opt out of all taxes and benefits from the federal government just by voting Ron Paul. Gradual scaling down of mega corporations by IRS racketeering busts. Regardless of how it turns out in the general election this November, the big investment bankers know the heydays of 1980s corporate and Wall Street Reaganomics, the heydays of the 2000s George W. Bush era tax breaks and endless war, the Obama heydays of 2008 through 2012 when corporations, Wall Street, and big investment banks got a fat taxpayer funded bailout, all those heydays of a bull shit market are over and done now. There's no going back to those days ever again now. There is simply no way to continue to spin their web of lies in the MSM beyond this coming December. The corporate special interest lobbyists are going to be purged from campaign donations by some form of new regulation regardless of which of those men are president because it will be pushed for through the capital chambers 
and public demand for its signing be heightened by the MSM.